for the cloud. And welcome back to the Off the Clock Show. You're joined with your host, Sean Gervais from the Orbis X CRM, as well as Marty, Mr. Marshall Hill from the Pints and Polishing Podcast, as well as Hyper Clean Car Care Products. And I'm sure Marty's got some pretty interesting things in the works. And uh, yeah, there's that big smile we're known for. <laughs> but anyway, man, how you been, man? It's been, uh, we, had a, we had a week there where I was tied up. So uh, appreciate your patience getting back. How you been? Yeah, man, rolling, rolling. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah. It's you, you it's a little bit interesting bad. getting back, but yeah, yeah. Uh, the the hard part was not having a phone. I spent uh, all last week still trying to figure out what was wrong with the phone. Finally, insurance got one over to me, and uh, brutal, man. Ten ten plus days or so without proper communication is. Oh man, you don't understand how rough that gets. It gets really rough. Yeah, it sounds like when we used to travel to Cuba, uh, we still go to Cuba, but it's different now. When we went uh, back, oh my God, we're going back down 2008, around there. Uh, communication was not like what it is now. Now you have all those plans where you can, you know, I don't, I don't know what they call it, but it's like roam like home or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're out, you're paying the $15 a day or whatever it is, but you have your same plan as you do back home kind of thing. Well, those days didn't exist back then. You were paying per megabyte and it was with Cubacell. And it was expensive. I'm talking like $50 a megabyte. And you don't realize when you browse a website, you know, you hit the wrong page and it's like loading a bunch of images and stuff. It's like, wow, that just cost me $80. <laughs> That's a great, you know, and uh, at the time my wife was in school and she wanted to check her grades and the grades were out. We happened to be in Cuba and she was so anxious to see her grades. And I was like, oh, babe, I don't know. Like, can we just wait? She's like, no, I need to know. I need to know. So of course, you know, being a loving husband, I said, okay, fine, go for it. I thought maybe it'd be like 50 bucks or something, you know? Nope. That bill came man. it was humongous. However, well, it was like maybe like $450 or something in extra data. Right. But back then 2008, that was a big deal. Crisis going on in the world, you know, life was different. Um, so that was a big deal. The funny part about that trip though, was a buddy of mine decided he wanted to stream uh, a movie. And we told him, we said, uh, bro, I don't think you know how Cuba works. Like I've been here many times. He had never been before. And he's like, no, 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 no. I have this plan on my cell phone. It covers me worldwide. Da -da 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 -da. I said, dude, I don't know. You should be careful. Anyway, he streamed the movie and he watched it. <laughs> $1,200. <laughs> was his data for that most expensive movie ever yeah just brutal and i don't even remember what he watched but it definitely wasn't worth it. we didn't even watch it with him that's how bad the movie was so whatever it was it wasn't worth 1200 dollars. that's for sure i did but catch up on john wick four the other day finally oh man i haven't been able to do it i bought it but it's three hours long man i i started to <laughs> like i said finally i was finally, able to catch yeah, up yeah. finally <laughs> <laughs> and because okay so hit me straight is it three hours of just the same kind of stuff like just fight scene after fight scene or is there actually three hours worth of story it's kind of no just i mean it's it's john wick fight scene after fight scene you know he right, walks yeah. to the next building and then randomly fifty thousand people show up and you know <laughs> he dummies them all and goes to the next building mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah yeah see it makes me think of uh we just watched extraction uh one and two we watched them back to back mm -hmm. which was nice action packs start to finish and it was similar kind of like just fight scene after fight scene but the way it's filmed and there was also a story behind it. So it was, I don't know, it was really good. If you haven't seen that extraction, 100% uh, good film. Very good film. All right, so let's get into the good stuff. I'm, right. I'm eating good. some good. cool little snacks, right? Good. These are uh, Biscotto de Polivo. I don't know. Okay. But it's just, uh, <laughs> you, you think okay. of them, you know, <laughs> right? Like if anybody is familiar with like the pigskins, you okay, know, yeah, yeah. Chichiro or something. There's a name for them. Like it's a it's a Latin snack, right? But it's pigskin. Yeah. This is not it. This is oh. actually flour. No way. Through oh. and through. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's no. like what deep fried or like crunchy. Yeah. No, it's not even deep fried. Oh. Wow. Seasoned? What's, yeah. what's the taste like? Hmm. Cracker? Cracker. I mean, okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Do they have different flavors or is it just that's that's no, the... I think that's the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hmm. know, it's just their style of a cracker. So I, okay. I grabbed some of those because I I didn't smuggle 
I, I brought back <laughs> appropriately wise. Appropriately. <laughs> now, some uh, kachasha. Mm. And uh, made some caipirinha. Oh, man. So, yeah. Caipirinha is lime. That is amazing. Lime juice, uh, sugar, sugar, and then this, that kachasha, which is like their rum. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah. And I think I think it's the same thing. It's like made from cane and stuff, right? I think so. I think yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, man. And I, I know it's amazing, though. That, mm, it's refreshing. I mean, yeah. just think lime water. It's almost like lemonade, lime limeade. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We usually and make then that you just have alcohol in it, and there wedges in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That on a nice you, uh, day. <laughs> yeah. You 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 pick the right uh, kashasha, you know, and so there's all different levels, as you know, same as there yeah. is in vodka, same as in regular rum, right? All different levels, and you get the good ones. I mean, you don't taste anything, nothing. Yeah, it just right. Takes, like, it takes you to happy all, time. <laughs> all you're doing is just drinking this like really <laughs> chill lime water, and it's refreshing. And three yeah. or four later, you're like, "Hey, yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, please tell me you went down to the beach and had some of those. Oh, absolutely. You can get them on Beautiful. the beach. Beautiful. Yeah, so people walk bad. around selling them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's man, one of the most popular amazing. drinks they have there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's their national one, I think, right? I think so. I in think so. Alcoholic beverages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's amazing. Uh. Yeah. My first experience with it wasn't in Brazil. Never been to Brazil, actually, but uh, I was in Dominican Republic. I mean, I met this couple. Uh, the guy, he was from Brazil. Well, I know, sorry, he wasn't from Brazil, but he played for the Brazilian baseball team. Uh, mm. But he was from, I think he might have been actually Dominican. Anyway, um, met him there. And we were talking and stuff. They they were going through it, man. They they lost their luggage. They were going through a separation. They were trying to like rebuild their relationship on this trip. And man, it was rough. And then uh, the guy said, "Man, I just really need a really nice drink that reminds me of home." You know. And I was like, "Well, where's home?" He's like, "Well, I spent a lot of time in Brazil. Played for the baseball team there and stuff." And he said, uh, "So I'm gonna get a caipirinha." And I was, "What the hell's a caipirinha? I had no idea." So it wasn't with the true ingredients because it wasn't in Brazil, but. I had that man it was one of those scorching hot days you can't escape the sun like even in the shade you're still just hot you know sweating and everything man i tell you i had that that was my drink for the rest of the trip it was just phenomenal and since then i've made them at home everything like that yeah solid drink man you you can make them without uh, the uh kashasha and you there are people that use uh vodka oh uh, okay yeah me i just use regular white rum but uh mm -hmm. it was at the time it was white rum from cuba but uh yeah, I, I think there's a difference, though, you know, like, uh, you know, you get that. I don't know. Maybe there's a difference. It depends if you under, you know, if you know rum and stuff like, yeah, like right now I uh, I made myself a green parrot, uh, which it is. Mm. This is a mixture of mixtures. This there's a lot of stuff in this one. <laughs> so there's uh, vodka, white rum, uh, creme de cocoa or whatever, uh, blue carousel, splash of orange juice. I'm missing two things. Sweet vermouth, no nope. white vermouth, yeah, and uh, something else missing an ingredient. There's like six or seven ingredients in here, but the cool thing with these ones is nighttime we have a box of glow sticks, and so when we're outside, all the adults hanging out, put a glow stick in there, and the whole thing lights up this like neon, looks like a nuclear rea nuclear reactor, and it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, be a good pretty, Halloween drink, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Well, those ones for Halloween, I do, uh, <laughs> what, do, what do I call it? It's got hypnotic in it, but there's a, a name I have for it. Can't remember it. Now we've renamed it to a number 11. So we have a menu in the house. When people are over, it's got 10 drinks on it. But then if you're friends and family, you know about the number 11. And it's got hypnotic in it. Hypnotic, vodka, and Sprite. And you put a glow stick in there. And with the hypnotic, of course, it just lights up. That's what we usually have around Halloween. But uh, yeah. Most people go for like, you know, something with pumpkin or spice or something like that. But uh, yeah, I tried one year to take, you know, those uh, little pumpkins, like the gourds. I took those, cut the tops off, hollowed them out, everything. I made this whole cinnamon, you know, mixture, everything like that. Boiled it, all kind of stuff. Anyway, forgot the pumpkins in the oven. <laughs> I was I was trying to just make them a little crispy. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out too well. But uh, yeah, so after that, I just gave up and I said, okay, we're just doing regular drinks. now. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> nothing too fancy. Because I spent like four hours doing that all for nothing. And it was way too much cinnamon. People didn't like it. It was it was bad news. But uh, 
yeah man it's a caipirinha man yeah cheers man welcome back cheers yeah i know that feeling where you're gone for like 10 days mm. that was the point of my cuba story when we were there the goal was to turn the date off so that you're not racking up a huge bill even just from it like pinging towers or something like that uh back when you could get charged big time for roaming so we turned it off and we were doing just seven day trips by day five most times i had to bite the bullet i was like okay it's a long time to just shut down business you know without like you, you should be able to be in business and kind of step away a bit but you do still need some some oversight right like five days you know you hit that marker there's emails that might have been sent out like there could be some shit going on that just needs your attention and uh, so if you're not checking in even your peace of mind you know just knowing like sometimes i look at my email and i scan through and i'm like okay nothing mission critical i can move on with my day you know but if if i don't check I'm wondering, there might be someone, uh, you know, who knows, something serious going on, right? So, yeah, it's important to check. Yeah, man. But, uh, but that's good. You're back connected to the world, man. I'm, uh, I'm jealous. I had a rough day with technology today. As you know, uh, we had massive storms here. We had hail and all kinds of stuff. My power went out about nine times. Came back on. Like an idiot, I went and I kept resetting clocks every time it would come back on. So I was like, okay, power's finally back on. Eight minutes later, power goes out. I reset clocks today, maybe 10 times. So I just finally gave up. They're all blinking right now. Um, that's fine. And it destroyed my camera. So that's why my, my camera quality looks like this. Uh, I think there was a power surge or something, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's been rough for me technology wise. <laughs> I was talking to my buddy in Mexico and he's in the country right now. And he's like, oh, yeah, my connection is perfect and this and that. And I was like, man, here I am in, in Canada, in the nation's capital. And every two minutes, my screen's freezing. And yeah, it was bad. <laughs> so so lesson to be learned. I should move to Mexico. That's that's what the moral of the story is, right? That's the, yeah. <laughs> always. You're like, yeah. We're just away from Canada. Come on. We're just away from Canada. I can't leave the maple syrup, man. Just can't leave it behind. <laughs> they, they make it elsewhere. And they also ship. Just Just so you know that's true that's true <laughs> yeah this is very true and you know it's not really difficult to to make yeah and there must be maple trees in the u.s like there's there's no what it just stops at the border you guys have maple trees all over i'm sure you know i don't know maybe we've got a secret way of doing it the secret sauce but uh <laughs> but they'll ship it don't worry but, but they will ship, they'll it. ship this it. Is true. this is true this is true it was actually cheaper for me to get syrup when i was living in the caribbean than it was to get apples uh, which is pretty crazy yeah apples were like six dollars each no idea why but uh you can get syrup cheaper than a bundle mm. of apples which is pretty crazy yeah man so uh aside from that man what's uh what's new in the the internet world now that you've been back connected did you mm. the no i mean actually you know when you when you space out for that long mm. there's some accounts i still haven't even reconnected i know man. i finally reconnected one yesterday but it's like even my own personal Instagram, I did. That was the one I reconnected yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I better do that in case somebody wants to send me, a, you know, like, I don't know. Like, hey. that is the interesting part of when people say, you, you know, you need to, uh, I think we've joked around about it, right? Like, you need to unplug. And it's like, yeah, I, I unplugged off an accident and I, I'm not happy. I, I can't get replugged back in. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, <laughs> and there's some accounts that I can't get back into, you know, there's, some phone numbers. I went to look up a phone number there today and it's gone. I'm like, how the hell is this person not in my phone? Like, there's no way. So Jeez, yeah, that's the frustrating part. That's the frustrating part. It's an interesting thing though. When you disconnect, you know? I have got to watch definitely a lot more uh, animal videos of, you know, lions and leopards eating shit. You know, that's oh, nice. That's always great. Yeah. 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 That's all you got to stay connected for that. Absolutely. man. <laughs> I know. I was just watching one. Oh my God. Uh, I was watching one with the kids. It was brutal, though. These uh, albatrosses, when they were flying and stuff, and then uh, they were getting eaten by tiger sharks. It was brutal. But uh, for me, I was like, no, that's just life, though. You go outside, and it's a scary place for a lot of creatures, you know? Like, for humans, you know, we have some fears. You know, I don't want to get hit by a car when I cross the road or this and that. But these things are literally out there looking around the corner like, I, I hope something bigger doesn't come and eat me. You know, like, that's that's pretty crazy, man. That's a, like Think about going through your day like that. <laughs> just go check the mail and you're like you know bears tigers all kinds of stuff like that's a wild world man that's is that a, what you guys do in canada i mean it's yeah <laughs> that's, that's what we do actually we have quite yeah. a few uh bears here and moose moose are the big problem actually 
Moose might not seem like it because people think they're oh, it's just kind of like a big deer, but uh, no, they're they're serious. Those things because they're like twelve hundred pounds and they get aggressive and they're fast and they uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty serious. Not to say like we don't all live in like igloos and stuff. I'm in a city, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, but it happens. It happens. You guys have guns up there. I mean, yeah, of course. You got guns now. Yeah, they're they're trying to take them away. But yeah, it's not just bow and arrows and stuff. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is this fire you have? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we got guns. We got guns. No, we don't have guns in like Walmart, like some places in the U.S. You know, we got guns. That's a shame. Oh. That's a shame. <laughs> well, we go down to the local quick trip, and grab one if we want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no id necessary <laughs> you look of age yeah you can grow a mustache let's go <laughs> yeah. oh man no i can't even tell that joke on air i'll have to tell you that after <laughs> said joker <laughs> it's bad though but uh but yeah no so we we do have guns though but uh the gun laws here are pretty strict though i'd say you know like uh in terms of across the whole country like in the u.s i know there's there's variations depending on where you are you know like new york city is going to have different laws than you know like california so on and so forth but um here man it's kind of across the board they they want everything registered has to be you know very purpose use so you know if you want this kind of gun you've got to only use it when you're hunting if you're outside without it then it's a completely different story you know and there's not too much like um what do they call it there where it's like the concealed the right to, to carry but like concealed whatever that permit is i don't know i don't know what it's called but uh but anyway there's not so much of that stuff but then of course you got people that just do whatever they want you know like even in the country like i've got aunts and uncles without putting their names or addresses out there <laughs> they've got they've got their own little armory you know it is a funny thing though i don't know how how, how are you with gun culture and stuff i don't, know. I don't know. i've never i mean i'm a city boy i mean i yeah. I, I got one during Corona because we all didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. And there was yeah. a lot of concern that people were just going to go around. Go. And, yeah. Like, yeah, we didn't know. So I, I got one then, but I, I've never shot it. I've, I've only shot a couple. I just I'm a city boy. You know, I yeah. even in Oklahoma, like, I, yeah, I went to school in Arkansas and played baseball. And it was crazy. Like the, the amount of people that would pull up in their trucks and they shot a deer or snakes, you know, they were skinning snakes in the bathroom. Like it was like, okay, Jeez. well, you yeah. know, Hey, I, right. as long as you have fun. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. No problem with people that want to go shoot. It's just, I just never, yeah. I just never have really been in a shooting thing, stuff. Yeah. The only thing I think I've shared this, the only thing that's random about me and guns is I really think it's because I played a ton of duck hunt growing up. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think from, from football and you know quarterback like you you learn to to lead and you lead to, you know you learn to throw the ball to where the receiver is going to be right like so when it yeah. came to skeet shooting that's some buddies are like come on we're gonna go skeet shoot it's like fuck it okay whatever like dude i dominated dominated nine mm -hmm. out of ten ten out of ten eight out of ten like dominated yeah. randomly Damn. randomly i i can shoot skeet wow that's amazing though that's impressive yeah and it's probably because of those things you could just kind of see you were aiming like where it's going to be not where it is kind mm -hmm. of thing whereas a lot of people they just follow the target and they're focused on mm -hmm. that you know yeah that's interesting though i wonder if there was if they did a study kind of thing on like entrepreneurs versus you know worker bees and they did something where there's like because there's a lot of foresight that goes into you know running a business right a successful one anyways and i i bet you there would probably be a correlation between those two you'd find that you know target shooters for example might be better for just the average you know worker bee versus an entrepreneur might be better at ski shooting or something like that i bet you yeah. i'm gonna run a test here yeah I'm going to a buddy's wedding in the country and uh that that was one of the plans just do some ski shooting and i wonder there's gonna be some other entrepreneurs there and then some worker bees i'm gonna in my head kind of tally it up and see oh you know okay i can see those guys were hitting the targets but uh when it came to ski shooting they were shit <laughs> yeah i'm curious I always like those kinds of things, you know, because there are certain personality traits that, you know, it's that whole thing I was talking about a couple episodes back about the dragonfly, you know, being 100% kill rate because it predicts where the target's mm -hmm. going to be, not just chasing after it like a lion would chase a gazelle kind of thing, you know, it's, a, it's different traits. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. But uh, yeah, so I've been listening to this uh, audio book recently. 
I, I do more reading than I do audiobooks. And I got this guy's thing. Man, I'm telling you, I fell for a sales funnel recently. That was phenomenal. And I, I, I gave the guy all the money he asked for. No joke. When, you know, they had the, the landing page and then, oh, but wait, there's more. I clicked every box just because I wanted to see the examples that he had on the other pages and stuff like that. And he had some really amazing uh, sales funnels. Hold on, let me pull up the, the name of the book here. Hold on. Because uh, I got the audio book, but the other one too. Um, sell Like Crazy. Okay, really simple. Um, so Sell Like Crazy. Not sure if you've ever heard of that or seen it. No? Okay, so Sell Like Crazy. I got the audio book. And the part that captured my attention most was he had this theory that was pretty interesting. So he runs a lot of ads. Uh, he's got a, I'm going to guess, New Zealand accent. Anyway, uh, his landing pages were fire. The way he delivered the message was good, and he just cut right to the right to the chase. And he was a no bullshit kind of guy. Like even in his ads, he he was using language that probably would have got him banned on Facebook and stuff like that. You know, he was just so I was like, okay, this is like an average guy that's just he's done some shit, figured some things out. And um, anyway, the parts that really intrigued me were the funnels he was looking at, and so how he's running his ads is a lot of people make a mistake of okay, they make an ad targeting a customer that's ready to buy hmm. and he said you're going after you know six percent of your potential customers because the getting someone at that exact right moment that is ready to buy is going to be really difficult to find that exact target audience at the exact right moment that they are ready to buy but yet your entire ad your funnel your copy everything is structured around someone that's ready to make a purchase in that exact moment he said, then you've got people that are at the other end of the spectrum that are never going to make a purchase. And he said, you're probably going to have more luck if you actually try and nurture those leads than if you try and chase after the one that's ready to make a purchase right now. Because trying to find that one person in that one moment that's ready to pull the trigger, pull out the credit card and do whatever, it's going to be really hard to find that person versus if you build your funnels around nurturing those other relationships where someone might not even be interested. They've never even heard of ceramic coating. They, they've never, it's not even on their radar. And you're trying to nurture them into a customer. It's going to be easier than taking someone that is right at that moment ready to buy. That was the one uh, thing that he talked about. The other thing he talked about was the best market is actually people that are kind of in the middle. They might have a little bit of knowledge, but they've never thought about making a purchase. Um, so they know about the product or the service or whatever it is but they haven't thought about getting it for themselves. And so targeting that group is the most effective thing. And so all of his ads and his little program, I think it was only, it wasn't much. It was like, uh, first off, he gave away a book for free. That was cool. Uh, second thing was his add-ons, which were like templates, landing pages, stuff like that. It was like $37 by the time it was all done. It wasn't a lot of money, but you know, he's going after the masses. Right. And so, I ended up being his target audience, which was the interesting part, was that I wasn't ready to make a purchase. I wasn't actively out there looking for, hey, I want to buy some landing page templates or something like that. But yet I was in the audience that knows about landing page templates, knows about marketing and knows about these things. And so if an opportunity did come my way and someone nurtured that relationship and explained to me certain things, gave me a little gift for free, this and that, walks me along the process, I become the person that's ready to pull the trigger. And then he hits me with it, right? And so I was thinking a lot about his process. And so I went through it so that I could study it, duplicate it and use it at my own shop. And so instead of targeting someone that's actively ready to, you know, pull the trigger and get some ceramic coating done this weekend kind of thing, we're now restructuring some of our ads to target more of an, it's a longer funnel, but you end up making a bigger funnel. So you can put more people in it and then you're nurturing all those relationships along the way. And some will be ready to pull the trigger right away. Others, it might be a month from now, two months, whatever the case may be. But it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out because now we're changing the verbiage we're using and we're not trying to make such a concise sales process now. Um, so it was, anyway, it's a really, really interesting uh, book. So far, I've done the audio book. I'm going to actually read the book because you retain things in different ways when you take it in different formats. Um, but it, uh, I don't know, it was definitely worth $37 that was spent. And right now too, the same guy, he's giving away his book for free. 
So if you want to just get his book for free, I don't know how many copies he's given away, but you could, it's called Sell Like Crazy and he'll send you a hard copy book. I think I paid like $2.99 for shipping. And then uh, I bought the extra stuff because I wanted to see what he had to offer. But anyway, check it out, Sell Like Crazy. It was pretty good. And that concept though of targeting that, that group that isn't quite ready to buy, but they've heard of the product or service and that's your biggest group. And then you can nurture them along. So instead of, you know, all these call to actions, like book your ceramic coating now, this and that, just dropping them little tidbits about this and that, you know, Hey, check out this, uh, what we did for this car. And here's the results it had or whatever, just different information pieces that lead them along. And you're kind of building that knowledge base for the customer. So then when it comes time to like, Hey, and we could do this for you. That's when they're going to be most likely to buy. So it was, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was a good read. I don't know, listen, I guess. <laughs> it's, so far, it was the audio book. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. That's all I do is audio. I I can't mm. do. I can't read. Oh yeah, yeah. Me, I like to do both, just because I I get different things from each one. So what I do is, as I listen to an audio book, I mark down chapters or something like that. Because with an audio book, you know, there's this intro, there's the prologue, there's the thank you to my editor, all this bullshit. I, I just listen for things. If there's a chapter that wasn't too fascinating, I skip it. I'm okay to listen to it. But then when there's some meat and potatoes stuff, I'm like, okay, I mark that down and I go to the book and I read just those chapters. And, uh, but, but yeah, but I know what you mean. But hey, most people, I was reading some stats and it's something like after high school, I think it was something like uh, only 7% of people will read a book again. And it's even fewer than that uh, sorry, it was 7% of people or something like that will purchase a book, but only like two or 3% will actually finish the book, whether it's audio or whatever. I was like, holy shit, man, that's wild. To me, I don't, I don't see how that's possible because a lot of people I know read, but then when you look at 7 billion people, you're like, ah, that's where the numbers really come into play. And the, the other stat, which I don't have off the top of my head is how many successful or CEOs or top dogs how many of them? Yeah. I guarantee you could do that 80 20 rule. And, oh, 100%. Yeah. And of the 80, you know, it's really 20%. And they're all those big top dogs are the ones that are reading and still continuing yeah. to further their education. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a big reason why I started. And when I started learning about that, I went, yeah. okay, well, I don't have time to read. I can't read to the level that I'll need to. So I can listen. I can drive and listen. I can yeah. detail and listen. I can all kinds of things and listen. So it's true. Yeah, I've I've I love to listen to books now and gain out, you know, gain things. My my tip actually is going to come from a book that I've been listening to as well as a conversation that I just had. And mm. the book is by David Goggins called Don't Hurt Me. And I'm only like the intro, like he's telling a story of, you know, apparently he had an abusive father and he, he went through a lot of bad times yeah. and counter conversation that I had with a guy that uh, was looking at some hyper clean coatings. He was working at a dealership and wanted to talk through which coatings they, you know, they should use at a dealership level. I believe three different times in the conversation he wanted to let me know that he had been a detailer for the past five years and he had owned his own business. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of sort of what you do in those moments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're at a dealership. You're working for them, but you used to have a business. So, okay, man. Like I, you yeah. know, after the third time you kind of go, got right. it, dude, I get it. <laughs> I understand. So, you know, right. Like you're kind of like, uh-huh. Well, and you don't want to say, well, what happened? But you're kind of like, and, you know, like, <laughs> well, you know, I just like I couldn't handle and you could fill in the blank. You really could. Um, you could just fill in any type of blank. And this is what you talk to people a lot that have been in that situation. They don't realize that you got to go through some shit in order to get what you want. 100%. Right. <laughs> there's there's only a few handful of people in the world that get that silver spoon mm. you know their their dad started a, a car wash chemical company you know 60 years ago and they inherit a, a brand right like that's a silver spoon kid that's a silver spoon family right like your dad did everything for him and they start on second base exactly. for those of us that actually go out and clean cars and start a business yeah. on our own 
we realize that we're not silver spoon like, you know, certain privileged people. And guess yeah. what? You got to go through some shit. It's called Thank refinement. You. Not yeah. every one of us gets to understand where we're going to be, what we're going to be at the end, how we're going to be there. And you don't start out with the same characteristics of you as a human being. When you start, as you're going to have at the end, you've got to develop skills. You got to develop personalities. You got to develop habits. You got to develop a lot of things in your life. And you learn how to develop those by what? Going through Going some shit. Through some shit. <laughs> like, I, I just cannot understand. I am really trying to gather this, this thought process as I see it more and more with, you know, you go into the groups code. of, yes, everybody wants the cheat code. Yeah. In business, there's not a cheat code. There's just a guy that writes a book and wants to give it to you and then sells you all the other things that you're going to supposedly need. And next thing yeah. you know, you're 200 bucks into it. Right. And, and they've promised sure. you a blueprint or you, you know, Hey, I, I've got my name on something. And so now I'm going to sell you training because I'm going to tell you about entrepreneurism by, you know, yeah. telling you about, I, I've got my name on somebody else's product. Exactly. That's not entrepreneurship. Not at all. Right? Like that's that's actually scamming it's true. right like it's one of the reasons why i give away my book for free is because i believe the information is actually helpful and i feel that you get helpful information when you pay for it sometimes but oftentimes it's it's leading to something else that's usually scammy you know like especially with this, these courses you know used to be a detailer now i do courses so, so what happened to your detailing business like uh, like i i make software but guess what my detailing business is still here it's still there <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know it's it's not like uh, oh that flopped so i couldn't detail couldn't run a detailing business so let me go start some software it's no i started the software because my detailing shop needed it and still needs it to this day that's it sorry i'm hijacking yeah. your thing sorry no no it's, but that's absolutely <laughs> true right yeah. like you you've you developed you've gone through things you've you've journeyed yeah. we talked about this right so inside of all those years <laughs> right years yeah. of, of of getting to this point you actually had to just like everybody else go through a refinement process oh, yeah. right and some of that refinement so yeah. sure and some of that refinement came uh natural to you and some of it came out of uh well better just have to do it because you you're quote unquote <laughs> let's let's use this word right as we always why another reason why i make fun of the grinders right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The grinders are you, you're grinding down something that you shouldn't be doing, right? There yeah. is a part of refinement, like as iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. So at you use iron to sharpen it, you will have to go through some tough, difficult times and shave away, whether it's habits. Yeah. This is a tough one that just uh, a personal thing with somebody I know that we're trying to go through is Sometimes you got to shave away your family. Hmm. Sometimes your family's actually toxic to getting you where you want to be That's because true. of their habits, because of the way they talk, because they haven't gone through the processes. They want to do it their way. Okay, I get it. But <laughs> that's not yeah. beneficial to yeah. you, that's right? True. If they're toxic, then you need to do away with them. You've got to shave things out of your life. Sometimes it's that way, right? Yeah. The other cool. way, the other way you get through refinement and the other way you get through some of this stuff, many times it just happens through a grind. Mm. Other times it happens because, and this is a practice that I, I've done and still do, I take the time to look at myself in the mirror. Mm. I look at my eyes. I talk to myself. Seems strange. I get it. Some of you are like, hey, whoa, right? Here's one big reason why I do it. If you're just walking down the hall or you're just walk, going to drive or you're, you're deep, right? Whatever you're doing where you're not looking at yourself, you know what you can do? You can lie to yourself pretty easily. Mm. You can tell yourself something about, about you that isn't true or about the situation that isn't true. It gets extremely more difficult to look at yourself in the eye 
and lie to yourself when you know that something isn't right. Mm. And if you're not making it through and you got troubles and you got struggles and you want to blame other people and you want to talk about other stuff and you can't look at yourself in the mirror and literally go through what you need to do to make things right, make things go on the right path, what you need to do if you don't like paperwork, how do you go through and figure out how you like paperwork or who you need to hire to maybe you need to look at yourself in the mirror and go, listen, it really is because I don't have enough money. Mm. Really is because I'm, I'm, I've got some bad habits with my personal spending. Maybe I need to look at myself and go, Hey, I need to check some things here because what I'm doing in my personal life isn't going to get me to where I need to be. I need to go through some refinement for my own self, pull down some things, really clean myself out so that I know I'll get to where I want to be. You, you can't hurt me, right? Nobody can, can really go after you, but you can go after your own self and do some surgeon type, really good cutting and refinement on your own. That to me is one of the best ways of not ending up. It's not that I, I love a, plenty of guys that work in dealerships. So don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's not that I'm saying, so you don't end up there. I think for this guy was the best situation for him. Yeah. Being honest with yourself that you don't want to go through the stuff really is a great, you should then, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, I know I need to do this, but I don't want to, great. Yeah. That's honesty. And that's 100% what you should do. Then you should close your business or just do it on the side. Go get a job. Go get some security. Go get some financial security. Get some insurance security. Get some things that a job would provide for you. Your life will be a lot easier. You'll be a lot happier. And then just clean some cars on the side. It's all good. All good. It's true. It's true. Because he's chasing that entrepreneurial dream. Like, obviously, if you mentioned it several times during the call, that was a really important moment for him when he was a detailer, but for some reason, couldn't make it work, whatever. And he's working there. And it's almost like he's ashamed of where he is. But if you look yourself in the mirror and have a, you know, deep, hard talk and you say, hey, listen, this is where you need to be. This is where it makes sense for you who you are. I think that a lot of people would be more happy with their situation where they end up versus maybe regretting things, you know, like, uh, my, if they're willing to do it, you still got to put in the work to get it done. Oh, yeah. That's that's what I think a lot Definitely. of people don't want to do. Right? They, <laughs> yeah. they realize how much work it is. This guy realized how, but difficult and stuff that he didn't want to do. So if you get to that point, great. Awesome. You're, Stop lying to yourself that you're <laughs> and yeah. just go get a job. It's true. Cause like me, I know there's going to be problems. There's always problems. There's yeah, always things that always. pop up and stuff, but I'm always just ready for whatever they are. And uh, it, it's funny. I was talking to one of our support staff and he had to do a zoom call and he was saying he, he still, he feels very confident and he's, he's doing a great job and people are loving it, but he, uh, he still gets nervous before he does it. And I said, man, that's okay. I said, I do sales calls every day. I still get nervous before every sales call but you think mike tyson when he went out to fight every fight of course he had butterflies in his stomach you know what i mean like you're you're walking into a ring you know anyone that walks in the octagon or a boxing ring whatever you're gonna have those butterflies in your stomach but it's knowing even if i'm gonna have that feeling i know i'm gonna overcome it one way or the other because i know what i want i know i want to be the champion i know i want to you know so i'm gonna step in that ring regardless whereas some people they might be like Maybe not today. I don't think I want to step in there. And that's where you got to look yourself in the mirror and figure out who you are. And uh, that was a big moment for my wife, actually, where uh, she was working for a law firm. She worked for a huge firm. They had 5,000 lawyers, uh, or sorry, 5,000 employees, uh, big law firm. They, they did IP stuff, for, like intellectual property for big companies, BlackBerry, Kellogg's, all kinds of stuff. And anyway, that was a big moment for her where when she went to school, that was her dream job. All of her professors said, you know, if you can land a job at one of these two firms, like you've made it, you know, and that's that was her dream for the longest time. And she finally made it there and she worked there and she was working her ass off. She was doing more than the other people that were there. A lot of people were telling her, like, why are you do working so hard? There's going to be no work left for us. Just slow down, go at an easy pace. And there's going to be we, we charge per hour. Who cares? And she didn't like that kind of atmosphere. She was like, well, we should be working hard. We should be putting out more and stuff. And anyway, it was ended up being a toxic work environment, even though it was supposed to be her dream and it was her dream job. So she stuck it out for a while. 
And, you know, I was just being supportive. And I said, okay, like, uh, let's see where this journey takes you. I knew it's what she wanted to do. So I didn't say anything negative about the situation she was in, but I could see it. I could see she wasn't happy being there. I could see she wanted to be home with the kids. She wanted to, you know, be home, spending time with me. She, she didn't want to be in that toxic relationship at work. Uh, but then also she didn't want to be away from the family. And it wasn't the dream job that she thought it was going to be from the outside looking at or yeah, from the outside looking. And uh, anyway, so one day she came to me and she said, you know, I had a talk with myself this weekend and I think I want to quit. And I swear to God, I jumped up for joy. I was so happy. I was like, thank God, because I was at home alone. I was sending her pictures of me on the patio with like a Corona. I was like, wish you were here. You know, kids going to school, taking a picture of the school bus, all these things she was uh, not there for at that time um, because she was pursuing this other dream. But she had to talk with herself and she realized it just wasn't for her, even though it's it was probably someone else's dream. Maybe they're going to fill that position and it's exactly what they were looking for. But for her, just because it seemed like you know to everybody else it was a prestigious job it was this that it just didn't fit right for her and she had to have that long hard talk with herself and eventually she just quit and then uh, that was it so she retired she's been so happy ever since and that was eight or nine years ago something like that and uh, now she's at home with me every day which is nice but it started with that hard conversation where I'm I wasn't there for it she had it with herself in front of the mirror and I'm sure that was a difficult thing to come to terms with but if you don't have that conversation, it's it's never going to happen. You're, you're probably going to end up unhappy in whatever you're doing. And that's where we have a saying at home. Um, if we go somewhere, we go to someone's house or we go for a dinner party or we go to a work function or whatever it is. We always ask each other because we can kind of get a vibe. You know, someone's not really enjoying themselves. And so we'll say, hey, babe, you having fun? And if the answer is no, in any way, shape or form, let's get the fuck out of here. Irish goodbye, don't even say anything. Just we're just gone. Because life is short. You only have one life to live. You might as well do something you enjoy. And if we're not having fun, we're gone. And it's the same thing in business. If I have a business that no longer is fun and I'm not passionate about it, it's gone. I don't care. It could be making a billion dollars a year. It doesn't matter to me. I have to enjoy what I'm doing. And that's the only way I'm going to uh, hear like come on, ah. Sean. come on, Sean. A billion dollars a year. <laughs> no joke. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, a billion dollars a year. You're just going to walk stay away, one. not having fun. I yeah. might stay one year. One year. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. I already know I wouldn't have to have that, you know, chance to walk away or have to have that talk with myself because I know whatever I was into would have already been something that was fun. And that's why I took it to a billion. But okay. So truth be told, a billion dollars, I might suck it up for a year or two. Yeah. yeah. And then after yeah, that, maybe, then I'm done. Maybe, then, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe let's take a number without a B in front of it. So, you know, a couple million, if I'm not enjoying it, it's, it's done. That's it. You know, like I, I love my shop really enjoy, you know, the, the parts that I do now seeing it grow, seeing the families that it's feeding because I started this thing and seeing, you know, all my employees, they're happy, they're enjoying themselves. The customers seeing like uh, we just hit, I think we're at uh, 1,176, I think as of this morning, uh, five star reviews, which is pretty dope. Uh, most people are still in the hundreds, you know, and we're at a thousand plus the hundreds, uh, which is pretty awesome. So, so that, that feels good. But if ever the shop was giving me headaches or heart palpitations or something, it's gone. You know, like it's a uh, life's way too short for that. But uh, speaking of short though, I do have a tip for today. Earlier was a book review, was not a tip. <laughs> I'm getting clever. See how I did that? So <laughs> did you just say your 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 tip was short? My my tip, it's effective though. It's, it's oh okay. <laughs> there we go. See exactly. <laughs> it's <laughs> it gets the job done. Apparently, it's only the first couple inches that matter. That's the <laughs> my tip for today has to do with the number six point six for seconds and 6.6 .6 seconds not a lot of time uh i mean depending if it's 6.6 .6 seconds in in hell or living in space could be a long time uh 6.6 .6 seconds on earth not a long period of time and 6.6 .6 seconds is the average time that it takes to write down someone's email address and the reason i'm mentioning this is because something's going on in the telecommunications world uh mostly impacting the united states there's new this new thing called A2P 
uh, 10 DLC. That's what the whole thing is called. And it's a registration for businesses that are sending out text messages for their business or on behalf of their business through applications. And given that Orbis X is an application, as well as so many other things that you may be using, QuickBooks and so on and so forth, uh, all of these applications, you now have to register for the A2P, which is application to, uh, what's the P stand for? <laughs> to person or something? To phone, application to phone. That's what it is, something like that. But uh, you have to register your phone number. The registration process is fairly simple. Uh, you have to put in your business, I, you know, tax number, address, all this kind of stuff, as well as the purpose of your messaging, so on and so forth. Uh, but the wait times can be quite long. Right now, uh, they've been giving people about five to six months of notice that this change is going to be happening in the United States. And like most business owners, we all put things off to the last minute. And so now you've got millions and millions of marketers and small business owners submitting their applications at the same time. And one thing we know about governments, they are not renowned for their speed. Uh, so they are processing applications as fast as they can. So why do I bring this up? I bring this up because I've been on podcasts before, and I think even you, me, and Greg debated this before about collecting customer phone numbers versus emails, or do you collect both uh, when we're talking about funnels? And I've always been a proponent, as I believe you are as well, of collecting both phone number and email. A lot of people opted for just phone number, and I even saw people bragging in groups that, uh, not bragging, but discussing, we'll say, uh, that I don't collect emails, it's a waste of time, emails are garbage, I only collect phone numbers. And I'm here to tell you that you have just wasted so much time because 6.6 .6 seconds is all it takes to enter an email address. The full length of an email address, the maximum that it can be is 254 characters. But the average email is 21.9 characters. And so at the average speed that people type, the average person, not someone like myself who uses a keyboard every day, is 200 characters per minute, which works out to 6.6 .6 seconds. And so now when something like this happens and you're not able to message your customers, those 6.6 .6 seconds would have been crucial for your business communications today. So my recommendation is spend the 6.6 .6 seconds, collect the customer's email. And the way that you can do it is by saying, there's changes going on in telecommunications. And we want to make sure that you get your appointment notices. We want to make sure that you get, you know, uh, notices about our shop if we move locations or things like that, or even just warranty information after we do your ceramic coating or your tinting job or whatever the case may be, however you want to word it to them, find a way to collect their email address as well as their phone number. Do the A2P registration so that you can send out your text messages, but collect the email addresses as well because most people keep their phone number for a long time, but oftentimes people change their phone numbers. People rarely change their email address. They might add additional ones, but they will always have their main email address where they wanna receive things. So spend the 6.6 .6 seconds, collect their email address so that your business is least impacted by changes like this that happen with US regulations that you have zero control over. And so my recommendation is that you do this and it will be the best 6.6 .6 seconds you ever spend in your life. <laughs> I'm really stressing that 6.6 .6 seconds because it's super important. And I've, I've known a lot of people that not even in the automotive industry, but there's a lot of marketing guys that I know uh, that put this off. And now they're looking at two to three weeks worth of waiting for their application to process. And during that time, uh, the one gentleman I know in particular, he's looking at losing around $640,000 uh, based on what he's been pulling in per week uh, through one of his marketing firms. And so what would that have taken if he had collected all those email addresses? <laughs> so long story short, 6.6 .6 seconds, and it can really make or break your business, as well as I do think that email does still have a place, especially with a lot of uh, customer communication, such as invoices, receipts, and things like that. You can search them a lot easier than you can your text messages. So 6.6 .6 seconds, guys, make it count. When texting started to come for business, I jumped on that very very early with different apps and sending out text messages to people. Nice. Yeah, I have been a proponent of both, but I did go heavy on the texting side for a while and yeah. um, saw great success, but you, you do find that uh, people are a little bit more governed over. They're a little bit more restricted with their, yeah. their cell phone than they are their email. That has pluses and minuses, right? Because it's true. As one a, of the, each Perfect. one has a plus, right? Like if you get somebody's phone number, you know they're going to get it. Yeah. You get an email, 
you might be getting something like me where I have a junk mail set up for most people. Like it just funnels in there. It's my Gmail, yeah. right? If I give you my Gmail, I <laughs> rarely am going to look at it. Like exactly. it might be a real email, but I'm just not going to look at it. So it's true. it does go both ways. Like I, for sure, there are, there are though some hardcore facts on, on why email marketing is better than text message marketing. It's there still are hardcore facts of, people that would open up an email and look are going to take the time to look through and read it. Right. Like they, they do generally, if they do click it open, they are going to read it. If you don't spam them all the time and you have exactly. actual information that they want to hear about. Yeah, it's true. And and that's the thing is that with email, the one advantage is um, you can be a little more lengthy with things as well. So that's where the, the sales uh, book that I was referring to earlier one of the things that they talk about, and they, they rely heavily on uh, SMS messaging as well, uh, but they, they did mention that uh, people have this myth, myth in their head that if it's a lengthy email, nobody's going to read it. And it's not true. It depends on what the content is and what the purpose of the email is. Um, so it's uh, he was av- actually advocating to have longer emails and have it be something that's engaging, entertaining, so on and so forth. So someone actually reads it, gets to the end. And by that point, you've got them hook, line, and sinker. And you're just ah, gotcha, you know, you're pulling them in. Uh, but it's difficult to do that with a text message. If you send me a, a text message that's more than like two or three sentences, I'm not even looking at it. It's just mm-hmm. TLDR, too long, didn't read. I'm not even, <laughs> like, forget it, you know, I'll, I'll open it and then I move on to other stuff. Don't even read it. And uh, that's just one of those things. Uh, email, um, it, it, you are right, though. It has it has a place in time. Like when it comes to things like reminders, people love text messages. It's a quick, hey, see you tomorrow. You know, just confirming the appointment, something quick and easy. I don't need an email for that because then I've got to what, trash the email, archive it or something. It's just put a text message. I don't think about it. Uh, But when it comes to other information, email definitely, definitely reigns supreme. Uh, But most importantly, you have the opportunity to collect both. So if it's 6.6 seconds to collect a average length email, what would it be to collect the phone number? Add another three, four seconds to that. So we're at 10 seconds and you've now got both. Why wouldn't you, 10 seconds a customer? We're not talking about a long you know, amount of time here, uh, but there are huge, huge, huge benefits to collecting both and sending it out. You might send to one customer and his email goes to spam, but you get through on his cell phone. You might send to another customer and that cell phone rejects your message as spam at the carrier level. He never even sees it, but he gets the email. You know, so this way you're just it does you're happen. Yeah. Your it happens both ways. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then using an app like Orbis X, you're not sending both of these. You click save and send on one thing and it sends both out for you. So you, all you have to do is just put the info in there. Orbis X can't guess. It's not going to just guess at what his email is. <laughs> so take the 6.6 seconds, the extra three, three and a half to collect the phone number, collect both. And that 10 seconds is going to definitely increase your sales and future proof your business for when things like this happen. Absolutely. So that is my tip for the day. Tip du jour. And uh, yeah, so awesome. Well, Marty, I am actually feeling like I need to go make a Kuiperinia now. <laughs> so, yeah. I feel like I need to go have another. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. Yeah, I'm about there. See, I added some uh, Sprite to my my green parrot. I'm going to chug that down and then uh, I'm on my way to the next one. So next week, right. I do have some interesting stuff that I can announce that's happening with Google and Orbis X. Can't get too much into it on air, but Something very exciting is happening that uh, the other ones will be unable to compete with. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> mm, we have an announcement next week, too. So uh, stay tuned for a new staff member that has joined the team. Shit. Mm. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, man. I am pumped now. Damn. I'm actually more excited for your news than mine. <laughs> Yo, that's wicked though. You know, on that note, hiring staff, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people fear it. I love it because you're, it, it's like investing in your time. You know, it's like, I'm going to get so much more shit done. now. I'm going to get 10 times more shit done. And mm-hmm. just, uh, you don't even realize the things you can delegate. You know, it's like, uh, oh, I can delegate this, delegate that. You just start delegating stuff. Oh my God. That feels good. There's headaches there's problems with hiring people but congrats man on the new staff can't wait to uh you know meet or hear about him or her or whomever or it maybe it's ai i have no idea (laughs) 
it could be <laughs> she he she he exactly the the he she the he she yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man hey you know i wonder if in uh, brazil they're doing that too because in, in mexico they they have like you know el Ella, you know but the and then with things you know they have like uh low la yeah, like, masculine and feminine yeah but now they're kind of like mixing things up a bit so it's like uh you know if you might have like la mesa like the table you know now it's like low mesa or something i don't know el mesa you can <laughs> just like whatever you want to do i don't know it's, it's it's a wild wild west out there man mm-hmm. it's <laughs> i don't know anyways we'll see you we'll see you next week thanks marty we'll see you next week on the uh, l off the clock show there we go <laughs> all right man enjoy your caipirinha i'm going to make one now too i'm excited <laughs> see ya all right see you brother